what is this? What is this? This is my first attempt at an acrylic pour. I have an idea. Alright, I'm feeling a little inspired. Recently I attended the Nova Open and I heard a horror story. Something that is truly specifically horrifying to someone in the miniature painting hobby. Some of you may have heard of the podcast Listening to Paint Dry. One of those hosts, Mike, was traveling there. Both of us were there. Hello, Dan. But Mike was traveling there, and as he was making his way through TSA, I hear tale that his box marked fragile was turned upside down, shaken, and then opened, destroying all of his best work that he intended to enter into the painting competition. I've thought a lot about how much that must suck. So to keep this video short, we'll leave that off the table, but I'm sure each of you can identify with this and feel it. So it got me thinking though. First of all, Mike's collection is a little bit light at the moment, so I'm going to paint something for him. And second, I'm going to make something inspired by his experience. I want to make a model that is coming apart. His whole reality is coming undone, so it got me thinking about acrylic pores and just how that could look kind of unmade. So I did this first experiment off camera, but let me show you how it will go. Um, I have a wolf attached to a piece of plastic card here because I plan on having models kind of coming out of this raw paint and you know are they sinking in or coming out who knows all this chaos but yeah let's do a little experiment on this so I'll just be taking some of your standard hobby paints and mixing them 50 50 with white glue I'll grab two colors we'll go with uh, black and white maybe I'll want a little bit of red involved but you're going to be adding water to suit your tastes, you know, how, how runny you would like it. I'm sure we've all heard of acrylic pores and seen the results. I'm just going for something streaky in this case. So we'll be trying it out over this wolf first of all, and yeah, just seeing how it comes out after there's a model attached to the flat surface. Okay, that worked surprisingly well. I have to give it the full few hours to dry to see how it turns out, but I'm satisfied with my second try. Um, moving on to the task at hand though, I have the main model to build. Um, I just pulled a bunch of extra Warcry models out that I had laying around and you can see him seated upon this diagonal plinth with that Swiss cheese background. The whole theme is that, yeah, the whole, the entire world is becoming unmade. So just mash him down there on top of a piece of milliput, kind of smooth things out a little bit, but yeah, mainly I want to have some creatures or, you know, companions kind of sinking in and out of this painty muck. So, yeah, just uh, sticking a bunch of random models in place, hacking things to pieces. What fun! There's even a skeleton, a floating head in the sky. Um, and I'll also take a little piece of brass rod, make that connection up to his arm, like a little... Yeah, the fountain of paint is being drawn off of him. It didn't go straight down so well, but... Everybody likes a nice bend. But following that mishmash of staging, I threw down more layers of white glue to just further assist in the smoothness. Maybe I'll have to apply some more layers, but yeah, let this guy sit and dry for a while. Uh, I'm going to stream, see how it comes out. All right, I'm back from Marquette, Michigan. Let's talk about this acrylic pour. First, I wanted to start it off with two hefty coats of white. I think the two-tone primer muddled things up a bit in the previous experiments, but was good for the miniatures, so it's nice to have that zenithal coat on the models, but we want a nice, flat, even primer for the acrylic pour. And next up, that's right, it was time for the big pour, after all. This time, I'll lay it down flat once it's uh, poured itself into a likable shape. This was very enjoyable. The churning chaos before my eyes conjure division most divine. But yeah, you're just pouring paint all over a model. The thick acrylics float nicely around the models, providing that sinking into or out of look that I was after. And yeah, after carrying out those experiments, this one came together quite nicely. 
just wanted to talk a little bit and show more of that acrylic pour footage, really. Anyways, all dry. Here it is after sitting overnight to dry. For the next step, I'll set up the brighter areas with some buff. The idea is to create a disassembling reality, so I'll start with more sketching and gradually render the main feature. Continuing to set up the sketch areas, I wet blended buff with a mixture of green, brown, and black over any bone areas. As I was working along, why not block some other areas in? I'll add German gray and hull red into the mix. The metals will be hit with gun metal, mainly with a mix of true copper and black for the chaos insignia. Finally, that mound needed a little rendering after everything had a dip. Black, hull red, and deck tan were applied. Making sure to work up some texture and keep a brighter area beneath his feet. I want the general brightness to lead the eye to the centerpiece model. I'm using a lot of... I am using all the same colors. The same colors that I did on the backdrop are coming onto the model, so I'm hoping I can balance this by just detailing a certain area more than the others. We will see. Release the juice. A healthy layer of ruddy fur from Army Painter's Speed Paint was laid down. This was very satisfying. It helped to separate the foreground and scenic areas, further adding to the unraveling chaos. Now that everything has been submerged and all the tones have been married, following that, it's time to bring up the surroundings. I'll be mixing buff and deck tan with hull red and black in varying amounts. Kind of mixing and matching here. It's a somewhat monochromatic scene, so it's pretty easy to do some lifting and shading. Work in small portions and let those unrendered areas show. Not bad. This feels a lot like sculpting. It's like I'm tossing this glob back and forth from hand to hand, hoping I don't mash one side. It's a very gradual conjuring, and I'm having fun. Now, to start sharpening the champion, I'll mix some German uniform with charred brown for my shadow and a hull red mixed with buff for the highlight. I'll have more sharpening to do, but a wet blend is how I'll start this off. At this stage, you're looking at the model in more basic geometric shapes. There are a lot of cool muscles and facial details to pay attention to, but just try to imagine the head as an egg. The leg? A slightly more elongated egg and just imagine the shadows falling smoothly across that surface you can hit some of the muscles if you like but the time will come later to sharpen and render all of those smaller details so just try to see it uh, more as a blank sketch doll or some eggs and now taking from those mixtures which is a common theme here I've got this kind of palette soup going on there aren't many colors involved but those kind of uh, subtle mixtures and dances between the two are where the uh, details lie. So I had some tender layers to put to bed, gradually sharpening every muscular fruit with deep shadows and highlights that began to include mixtures of white, buff, and hull red. I'll take my time on the main character. I want him to jump out. Next up, to treat the armor and the cloth just right, I added black to the hull red to be shading the cloth down, and then buff to lift it up once again. You can see a theme going here. And then on the armored portions, I brought the German gray back into play, but this time I was mixing black you know, down into pure black to get the shadows, and pulling things up to a pure deck tan on those finest edge highlights. Um, also, as I'm shading the, the armor with the black, I'm just kind of sweeping that over onto the, the trim. All of the trim on this has been painted with gunmetal, and yeah, you can just kind of carry your sweeps like the 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 mat. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. The flat panels are acting as your guide. I can tell where I'm building to with these light gray highlights, so everything outside of that will be shaded down with black, including the trim. Just a little time-saving step. It makes sense in my mind. Nextly, the sword needed to shine to further confuse reality. I decided it should be pure gold. You know, it seems it seems right that this champion has been dragged into this horrendous unreality and a quest for some magical item. 
So first laying down many coats of bright gold until it showed to just its purest brightness. That healthy coating was shaded with light amounts of greedy gold and then highlighted with shining silver. I use shining silver to highlight all the metals. And hey, look at that hairdo. It's been a left alone for no reason, but maybe I am just a little obsessed with length. Because length is strength, after all, and someone with long hair has deep thoughts, I can tell you. In reality, it's just the stepping nature of recording. So, let's paint it with brown, green brown, and black, all mixed together. Palette soup. Just making mud, really. Then, lift it up with buff. Keep the brightest highlights aimed at the bends in the hair. Remember that hair is a reflective material, or at least you want to think of it that way in most cases. The salons of chaos are always booked solid, so just add more dimension to that, that uh, little spout of hair. You want to make it look a little more dramatic than something that is light absorbent versus something that is light reflective. Final step. I've been thinking about this the whole time. The model is... everything is the same color. Like, my eyes do come to focus on the champion, but I want... I put a lot of work into this. I want it to have more impact, so let's get a little risky. I'll load up some Majestic Fortress into the airbrush, and after blocking everything off with some poster tack, just add a nice kind of hue of Majestic Fortress. Kind of just filling in behind the character. You can see how this, this silhouettes the character. And I had so much fun with this, I was like, okay, that looks good. So if one hit is nice, naturally 100 hits is 100 times better. So I pulled the poster tack away. I could see how it's, if I, I could gain a little more control with the airbrush. You know, I'm, I'm a little, uh, not the best airbrusher, brushist. So anyways, I went in and just sprayed some more of that Majestic Fortress. Uh, in from the model from uh, stage left, stage right. Anyway, the model's left. <laughs> and yeah, you can see the. it really helps to separate things. That, that little touch of the cold. Mwah. Kiss the fingers. Okay, it's time to unwrap and present. No, no it's not. Let's, let's go a little further, okay? <laughs> Painting is a back and forth process, right? And this one especially, so it's an experiment. Uh, I'm looking at the model, and he is containing life. What is around him is being drained of life, so I think it would just make things a little better to add a red to the mid-tone. Uh, all the cloth on the character where I use that hull red, I'll take Kato Red Base, just a nice pure red, and just lay it into those mids, thin and glaze-like. And now, now it is done. I hope that Mike likes this piece. Still trying to think of a snazzy name for it. Shapeless Being? Something like that. The title will be in the title. But I had a lot of fun with this one, and I think that it speaks larger to finding inspiration in all things. There was no, uh, the narrative written for this was a story out of real life. Uh, also, that incident happened when Mike was traveling to ReaperCon, not Nova Open. I assumed that him and Dad were uh, bonded by some kind of invisible cord, but this is not the case with most podcast hosts. But I reached out to Mike, and I just wanted to make sure that I could present this story in a more major way. Thousands of people will be hearing about it, but he's okay with that. And his podcast is very fun to listen to. If you are into paint, check out the paint God damn it. Listening to Paint Dry podcast. I always want to say Paint Bravely, which is another fun show. But, yeah, um, I would like you to go and try to conjure some kind of feeling up from your own world and represent that in miniature art. I worked at a tattoo shop at one point, and people would come in with these, uh, they want to memorialize something with basically a word cloud. And I would say, try to symbolize all these words with a picture. Let's, let's work on that. So, a smiling space marine could be inspired by the Sunday brunch you had. You should dig a little deeper than that first example. Usually the third idea is most funny. But, yeah, peel something off of your own life and put it into a miniature. It feels better. This is not the most well-painted model but it feels good. 
and I had fun, and it's good to give. So, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for support on Patreon. As always, couldn't do this without you, and those extra funds, well, they're buying hats. I'm not a hat person. Anyways, thank you very much. Thank you everyone for everything, and I'll see you next time.